Hi, and welcome to the Enquendo Guitars Workshop for another part in the video series where I show you what goes into making one of my electric guitars. In this episode, I'm going to start working on the body and I'm going to start with book matching this beautiful quilted maple top. And hopefully by the end of the episode, we've got a guitar body ready with an inlaid quilted maple top. So please keep watching. And if you're new to my channel and my videos, uh, yeah, please check it out. Please check out my other content, uh, mostly guitar building related or sometimes some updates here from the workshop. Uh, yeah, and please consider subscribing for future tips, tricks, tool reviews, um, yeah, for the amateur in a small little chat like myself. So yeah, please subscribe to my channel for future content and let's get started on book matching this top. I have a wonderful wood supplier that supplies these already book matched or almost book matched sets. So he's already cut it open for me. He supplies these uh, tops, guitar tops in sets, luckily. Um, but there's still some work to be done. For example, there's not a nice joint line here. It's a bit bowed at the moment. So I have to plane it down just to get a nice and good joint and an almost invisible seam. To get this set lined up as symmetrical as possible, I like to draw in some reference lines. And what I look for in the top is some distinct marks that uh, exist on both sides of this set. For example, there's a very distinct pattern here and a very distinct point in the pattern and I can reference it, reference it on the other side as well. And I look for those kinds of distinct features and I try as best as I can to make some reference lines and some reference points on these sets. So I know when I'm planing down the edges to get a perfect joint, uh, I keep it as symmetrical as possible. So yeah, that's what I've already drawn in. And I usually take a fictional center line by measuring out these two points, for example, and with this easy protector that has measurements running from the center, I can easily find a fictional center line, make some reference marks uh, along the length of the top before I start planing the edges. So that's already drawn in. I hope you can see it in this light. And now I know when I'm going to plane, as long as the lines are in line, and I can measure the distance between the edge and the reference points I marked out that my top is as symmetrical as possible. So let's go to the shooting uh, board, shooting board, shooting board. Uh, yeah, and plane down these edges. So here we are at my shooting board and you probably already know what a shooting board is. And uh, if not, there's plenty of videos uh, on the internet to be found on how to make your own shooting board and yeah it just the shooting board just helps you plane down these small little edges so you can just put your board against the stop and use a long plane preferably a shooting plane but yeah any long uh, plane will do. I think you can even do it with a, with a smaller number four if you don't have a, a longer plane. This is a Stanley number seven. I just sharpened it. It's, it should be razor and razor sharp. If you're going to do, if you're going to plane uh, a very figured top, make sure your plane is yeah, as sharp as you can get it in. I make mine razor, razor sharp. It just helps to get a yeah, almost invisible joint in your top. And I'm going to start with just making sure this is as straight as I can get it. And just by running my plane against the edge. And I start with cutting with almost yeah, no depth at all on the blade. And I'm going to increase it with each pass 
until I get a nice and thin shaving along the entire length of the board. Nice and thin. Let's always check if your blade is square. Mine is not, apparently. All right, this is a nice and consistent shaving over the entire length. Let's take the other side of the top. And do the exact same thing. Again, nice and consistent shaving, so this should be straight as well. To do it first test fitting. Take a closer look. Yeah, I'm not sure how good this shows up on camera, but you can see only after these two passes, there's almost no gap visible anymore. I can see there's a little bit of gap here and here, most likely of the plane and tearing out a bit. And I'm almost symmetrical. I can see here is a distinct point in the pattern. Same goes for here. Almost here, so I can take off a little bit extra on this side. Yeah, and I keep doing this until there's almost no seam visible and I noticed there are uh, all these yeah, points of reference I like to call them on the uh, pattern of the wood itself. Let me work on this for a while longer until I've got absolutely no more gaps visible so the, I've got a very inv invisible seam almost like it's here at the moment and I've got it yeah, nice and perfectly mirrored and symmetrical and I'll get back to you when it's time to glue these halves together. Yeah, before we start gluing these parts together I just want to show you and I don't know if it shows up on camera that with the smallest amount of just a light pressure the seam disappears you can hardly tell there's any seam and it's over the entire length of this top there's no seam visible and this is what you're looking for yeah let me set up for the glue and I'll see you there so I'm all set to start gluing these two pieces, these two sides of the top together. But before I start gluing these two sides of the top together, I always do a mock-up clamping just to see where I'm at. Uh, if I need a lot of pressure or none at all. Uh, yeah. If my clamps are set up correctly, I, I'm using some homemade clamps. I always like to use a solid block for one side. Um, yeah, I think it helps in dividing the pressure of these clamps. And this one is, is especially a bit tricky because I've got still a piece of live edge on one side of the top, but I can't remove it because I need the width at this point. So I'm going to do a mock up clamp up just to see if I might run 
into any difficulties and yeah <laughs> before I apply any glue. So let's start by tightening the middle one a bit. This is good. This also seems to work. Both sides are nice and tight. And almost no visible seam, so this should be good to go. Maybe I have to adjust this one just a little bit. It's just a clamp. I also like to have some um, waxed paper or some grease-free paper. It's essentially, uh, I stole this from my wife's kitchen. It's a uh, baking paper. Um, I always um, make sure I have this at hand and also a couple of wooden blocks. If I need to clamp down the two edges, I can wrap around the paper. It, it won't stick to the wood glue. So, and I can use two blocks just to keep the edges nice and level with each other if needed. Uh, so I always keep these at hand, just in case. So yeah, I think I can start applying the glue. And uh, yeah, fit these two parts together. Let's remove these. Just in case I don't trust this piece with the live edge here, so I went ahead and got another um, yeah, beam, piece of hardwood I had laying around. And now with only the center clamp tightened, I still have enough pressure here for the glue up on, on this side, so yeah, we should be fine. So I can start applying the glue. The easy part. Almost forgot to mention, because I'm using homemade wooden clamps, I've added a piece of uh, PVC tape, um, again non-stick, for the wood glue onto these beams, just to make sure I don't, don't accidentally glue my top to my clamps, for anyone wondering. Struggling with these bubbles. So, yeah, here we go. Spread it out. Don't use too much. And this is where the marks I previously made come in very handy when aligning these two halves. I really enjoy this kind of work. It's not difficult, you only have to be precise. And it's one of the things that shows even when the guitar is finished, it's one of the first things and you notice this, the book matching of a top. And I might be repeating myself, but yeah, it just takes time. And I know, I know, it's, it's my hobby. I don't have to take my working hours into account just yet. Well, the edges are level, so I don't need the additional clamps, I can leave it as is. One thing I'm going to do is remove the squeeze out. You can see there's no edge 
nothing. Yeah, here just a little, but we send it out at a later stage. So this is all that it takes to put match and glue up the quilted maple top. Time for some coffee and I let this cure I think overnight and tomorrow I start cutting out the shape and then start cutting out the body from that beautiful piece of black limba. So see you in a moment. It has been approximately 24 hours since I glued up this top. So it's time to undo the clamps and look at the end result. Yeah. And here's our glued up top. It's, I think, fairly level. Fairly straight, not much copping and bowing going on. And yesterday evening, off camera, while the glue was half set, there was all already skin forming. Uh, I flipped the whole assembly or the clamps and everything around, and I re removed most of the squeeze out on the back. There's just a little bit left, but any squeeze out you can remove fairly easily with a very sharp um, but yeah old chisel I don't use my good chisels to remove any dried up glue but I've got a very sturdy old chisel which is still very sharp so I can remove the squeeze out uh, very easy here it is a very old but very sturdy chisel Still sharp, and I can fairly easily remove the squeeze out. So good enough for now. And now it's time to get the top as flat as possible using probably um, some planes, maybe. Depends on the figuring, if I can plane this down a little uh, using hand planes or maybe a belt sander uh, or a uh, random orbital sander uh, to get the stop uh, nice and flat on both sides. Yeah, before we can take a look at positioning the body outline and cutting it out on the pencil. For the ease of filming, I'm going to try this uh, on my router table. I've clamped down a piece of MDF and it should prevent the top from sliding somewhat. And otherwise I can put in a couple of small nails to keep this top in place while I work on it. But first, before I'm going to do anything, I want to remember <laughs> that this is the um, top side. So I'm going to mark one of the edges with a permanent marker to indicate this is the top. top. So I had it one time. <laughs> couldn't really see what was the good side of the stop after planing it and flattening it. So these days I just make small marks uh, to indicate what is the right side up. To start off I'm going to use a very old low angle block plane. It's a Stanley but it's at least 100 years, years old I was told. Um, yeah, very nice a little hand plane you see me use this all the time because I don't know if it's the original blade or not but you get it razor and razor sharp and it copes quite good with the um, quilted maple and I'm going to use just a sh the, yeah, very shallow cut and remove some of the humps present in this top still And I'm using a diagonal stroke and I don't know if this is the right technique which is taught at schools or um, but it's a technique I use and it works for me so, and that's the point of my videos I'm showing you um, the techniques I use and maybe you can adopt them use them yourself but I'm self-taught 
I had no formal training in woodworking whatsoever. So uh, most of the techniques I found out uh, the hard way. Yeah, and they work for me. So. And I hope, yeah, of course, by making these videos, and uh, you can adopt them too, uh, try them out, and, and see for yourself. And yeah, if you have any other suggestions, comments, or a good experience with the techniques I'm teaching, uh, I'm showing you, not teaching, but showing you in these videos, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear, uh, yeah, techniques you guys use, uh, or if my videos help you in some way or another. And I'm noticing while I'm playing that there, here's a high spot. But you can see probably after just a few passes, the light might be a bit bright. Um, the difference it makes, I think the light is too bright. Um, but yeah, I can clearly see um, where I'm removing materials and that there's really no seam. I'm very pleased with how this book match Turned out. Yeah, I'm taking so little off with each pass, it's almost sanding, but without the dust. Almost there. Yeah, I don't know if you can see, but I'm very sweating. I had my workout for this week. I don't have to go to the gym. Yeah, it's a hard job doing it by hand. So if you have access to a good planer or a good drum sander, don't hesitate to use it. Um, yeah, it's that I don't have the budget or the space to fit in more big machinery like a jointer, thicknesser, or a drum sander. Otherwise, uh, I would have one. So if you have access to a planer thicknesser uh, with a good set of blades or preferably a drum sander, yeah, use it. It saves you a lot of time. I'm almost there. I think now I'm going to use my belt sander just to give it a quick sanding and smoothen it out real good. And then it's time to fit the template and cut it out on the pencil. So I've got my big belt sander and of course uh, a dust mask and I'm going to fine sand or fine sand I'm going to flatten out this board even more uh, with my belt sander it's an 80 grit sanding belt and just to be sure I screwed in two little screws here at the back in the MDF plate or in the MDF board that's underneath there because as soon as you touch your top with your belt sander, it pulls it down and it flies through your workshop and you want to prevent that of course. So belt sander, dust mask, and here we go. track of your progress while sanding or planing you can use the cross trick you saw me use in doing the fretboard and the neck cross hatch your entire top and of course the spots where the cross hatches um, disappear first are your high spots uh, and you need to be working on them more uh, and where the marks are still present you don't want to sand that area too much first take down your high spots until all your um, markings are disappearing equally so you have to remark once in a while just to keep track of what you're doing and you should end up with a nice and level surface
this isn't the most healthiest of job so that's why i said if you have access to better tools use them i'm using the tools i have and yeah and for the space i have available And of course, while sanding and planing, once in a while, check the thickness of your top. I'm very pleased with the end result. For now, it's, uh, it's flat and that's what mattered. Yeah, let me clean up the shop a bit. Let's get rid of all the dust and I'll see you in a moment. So, I'm back cleaned up as you can see but to be honest it's been only a second for you guys since the last clip but it's been a week for me and what a week it has been it's been absolutely crazy um, as I'm recording this uh, I just did the giveaway I just launched uh, that video on the giveaway guitar uh, and it's been absolutely crazy um, people um, contacting me doing inquiries on guitar builds yeah and I really really want to thank all of you for your support my channel has been growing in the last couple of days i have emails to answer uh, websites to update i had uh, customers coming over to try and uh, actually buy a guitar uh, richard if you're looking thank you very much for your purchase um, yeah absolutely insane week and also i had the behemoth of a fretting tutorial uh, to do so yeah, in the beginning of this video, I said I would try uh, and get the body ready for routing in this episode. And I'm already sure that's not going to work uh, and it's not going to happen in this video. So, uh, yeah, I'm a bit torn between doing these long one hour tutorials um, or making these videos shorter. So if you can help me out by letting me know what you guys would like to see. Uh, do you like and do you enjoy these long one hour tutorials very in-depth or do you want me to cut them up in sections i want to do these in-depth tutorials because i often feel when i watch a tutorial myself uh, that there are parts missing that they're not telling or not showing and uh, yeah and that's something i want to avoid i want to be as detailed as I can be and, and show you as much as possible in these uh, tutorials without making one hour, maybe two hour long videos. Um, yeah, I don't want to take up all of your time. Although I really appreciate the support you're giving me on my channel right now. So yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's continue <laughs> with preparing the top. Uh, in the last clip, I used a belt sander uh, to flatten this top, of course. And I'm going to get my templates and try and figure out how I'm going to yeah, place it on my top. So yeah, come a little closer. So here's my collection of templates for my, I use for my guitar bodies. And of course, uh, control cavity covers, um, tremolo spring cover, headstock. And I've got a couple of templates for my guitar body, uh, three to be exact. The first template, I use for routing out uh, and cutting out the top of the guitar and then I've got another template that consists of two parts. One is the main outline of the body with the control cavity and I've got a uh, yeah, negative space template I use for routing out the cavity to be used on the inlaid top. We're going to need a template for the top first. And as you can maybe see, I went ahead and did some research. Can I actually fit everything on this template? So there are actually already some lines on it. I've drawn on the center line and I can place my template in this fashion on the top. I'm going to try to use as much of this top as possible because I also want to make my headstock veneer out of this top so it matches with the body. So I have to place it somewhere like there. And of course, uh, 
the, the cavities on the back as well. I want to do those from the same wood. And I think I have to lay everything out something like this. I think I can barely fit everything on. Uh, and I don't want to have, yeah, although the seam is almost invisible, I don't want the seam crossing uh, my headstock or, or any of my covers. So if I look at it like this, it should be possible to cut everything from the same top. Yeah, I don't have much uh, room or space to spare on this top. So there's only, yeah, basically only one possibility to fit everything on this top. Usually my tops are a little bit bigger and I have some wiggle room, some play room, so I can select the best pieces uh, uh, to go on the guitar and the headstock and such. But this is such a beautiful top, yeah, any piece or any section will do. Let's put on some dust extraction and let's cut out a top. Here we've got our nicely cut out top and as you can see I always leave one or two mils uh, of an edge between the actual line and where I make my cut. So don't try to cut too close to the line because with this highly figured wood I've noticed at least on my bandsaw um, it wanders just a little bit so try to stay away from your line a little but don't leave too much uh, wood between your line and where you make the cut, otherwise you have a hard time sanding your top uh, to the line using for example an orbital spindle sander. Or if you're going to do it like I do by using my uh, router table, um, yeah, you've got a very high chance of tear out or even whole sections being ripped off from this thin of a material by a router if you leave too much wood to be removed by a router. So I generally keep between one and two mils so yeah, let's stick on the template and let's clean this one up. And I'm going to use of course masking tape super glue to stick my template to the top so I can use a, a bearing guided router bit to clean up this edge. strips of masking tape on each side. Now let's stick them together and I always apply my super glue to the masking tape um, that I've stuck to my workpiece, so in this case the top, uh, just to prevent uh, yeah, any super glue ending up on the top. I don't mind as much from some super glue ending up on my template, but I don't want it touching the nice piece of wood. Just a little strip will do. And again, I don't use any accelerator uh, because I want to be able to really fine tune the placement of my template. And yeah, it cures in seconds anyway. And this should be it. Now I can press it down. And it's stuck already. I always double check if it's really stuck. I don't want my template flying off halfway through the routing. Yeah, and here we go. So I'm ready to start routing. First, get, get the route a bit. Yeah. 
I'm using a router bit with the bearing on top, but if you have another one with the bearing on the shaft side, it's basically the same, only you have to run uh, your template under your table. I can run my top on the table. And I like this router bit, it's a small router bit, it's fairly new, I only used it a couple of times. So I know it's sharp, but that also should prevent tear out. And the blades aren't that um, big, so there's also less chance on tear out. There's a uh, higher chance of getting burn marks, but because I'm going to inlay my uh, top into the body, yeah, they are going to disappear anyway. So don't mind that as much. So set the depth and be sure it cuts all the way. So the, and the bearing still runs on your template. Put on some dust extraction yeah, and let's go. So here we have it, our nice quilted maple top. I might have referred to it as flame maple, but of course it's quilted maple. Um, yeah, almost ready to go. I have to clean up the edges some more, but before I go and do that, I want to have my cavity uh, in the rest of the body ready so I can yeah, make sure I keep a nice and tight fit of this top into that body. But unfortunately, that will be in a next video. Um, I want to keep these videos, like I said earlier, uh, I'm trying to shorten them a bit, try to keep them within half an hour. Uh, uh, yeah, and I still want to have plenty of time to explain everything as much as I can and as good as I can in these videos. So yeah, uh, yeah, let me know in the comment section down below or by hitting that like button if you learned anything from this video. Uh, yeah, leave a comment on topics um, you want to see me do. Uh, yeah, and let me know what you think. Uh, coming video will be preparing the rest of the body blank and inlaying this top. And yeah, perhaps the video after that uh, will be a lot of routing. Uh, and I might do a special on how to place and how to route a Floyd Rose tremolo in a new guitar body. So keep an eye out for that one. Subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss out. Yeah, and yeah, for the guys already subscribed and following my channel for a longer time, thank you once again for your support uh, the last weeks. Yeah, it meant a lot to me. Yeah, and for the rest of you and all of you, I hope to see you in the next video. But until then, have a nice week.